Welcome to Stage, Screen, and In Between with Helen. I'm Helen Primus. I have a terrific guest for you today, Anthony Robert Grasso, who is an award-winning actor, director, acting coach, and the founder of ARG Studios. He has plenty of TV roles to his credit, including Gotham, Person of Interest, Law and Order, Unforgettable, and wonderful, wonderful indie film credits. As a matter of fact, he has five movies in the Long Island International Film Expo this year that he's either directing or acting in. Anthony, welcome. Hey, how are you? So nice Boy, to meet you. Boy, are you a dynamo? I'm telling uh, you. You know, what's wild is that, you know, a lot of these weren't shot simultaneously. They were, you know, a couple of months in between. So they always come out at the same time. So that's why there's another five here. Last year I had five as well. It was really great. Um, the last three years I've done a lot of indies. Yeah, you, you never know how they're going to end up wrapping up, and it does take time yeah. sometimes. And I want to say welcome to my red carpet, and you look I very know. handsome. Well, thank you very much. I, I put on a jacket just for you. Um, <laughs> just really quickly, uh, you know, this is my 13th film um, at Long Island Film Expo, International Film Expo, uh, which is pretty neat because, uh, uh, you know, I got to know Deborah and John and Henry and those guys, and it's just been such a great... Um, you know, platform for indie filmmakers and actors. So I'm always so, so honored that they uh, respond so well. And then I won two awards in the last two years there. So yeah, well, you know, it's it's the people that, that like the film and it's the whole uh, jury mm -hmm. of people that vote on that too, because it's not just up to one person. So right. your films apparently are going over big, you know, <laughs> so that's a good thing. So let's talk about some of them right now. Sure. Now you have a, a movie that you're the lead actor in and it's called The Blind Date and it was based on a play, correct? Correct. It was based on a play by Peter Danish. He's a... Uh, a scholar, educator, and a novelist, and a playwright. And he decided to make this into a film. It's a little controversial, it's political, but it's mm -hmm. uh, a human story. And there's a nice twist towards the end, I don't wanna give it away, but it's, uh, it's fantastic. I won two best actors for this particular piece in other festivals. So it's been received really well. It's won uh, multiple, multiple awards for best short and best director and best writing. And was oh, this one, was it filmed on Long Island? No, it was actually that one was filmed in um, New Jersey, okay. uh, where all of all of my scenes were in, in New Jersey. Okay, and uh, can you tell us a little something about your character? Are you a, a yeah? Husband? He's also a doctor. It's funny. I have a little doctor theme. <laughs> I play a doctor <laughs> in The Blind Date, a doctor in General Mess, and a doctor in uh, My Life as a Doormat. Uh, but they're very different. They're very, very different tone and, and, and everything else and different doctors. Um, I play a doctor, uh, but uh, you don't know that necessarily. And this young lady comes to me in the middle of the night and, uh, you know, it looks like you've been kind of a blind date set up and we slowly interact and then things are said and things go on. And, Have uh, you ever been on a blind date? Many, many, many years ago. It wasn't good. Because <laughs> you're very happily married right now. Yes, I am. Uh, married <laughs> 18 years last week. Crazy. Happy anniversary. Thank Happy you. anniversary. Yes. Yeah, um, so now you have another movie called The Long Commute. And it's a short film. Short and uh, you're also the producer on that, right? And a co-writer, yes. And a co-writer. And the director is Miguel Martinez? Or, yeah, it's Garzon Martinez. So it's Miguel Mar uh, Garzon Martinez. Uh, he's wonderful. He's a really active director. We became a partnership uh, when I had this idea to do a film about a father son uh -huh. uh, who are strained. And there's a reconnection due to the father becoming very ill with uh, dementia. And my character is plucked out of his very busy CEO life. I'm also a Brit in it. And uh, my father's British, and actually the actor who plays him is British. And it's Godfrey J. Rayner, by the way. And he also uh, won Best Supporting Actor for this film. So we're very oh, excited. Good. Yeah. And um, so the, the, the journey of the project is how my character really kind of uh, uh, reconnects and kind of about forgiveness. You find out things. And then there's a twist in this one as well at the very end. And uh, what we learn 
I think is that time is unforgiving. So yeah. sometimes you got to act when you, when you want to act and not wait. But it's a beautiful, beautiful film. I'm very proud of it. Um, this actor, Godfrey and I, we became friendly. He was my student of all things. And he came into the acting in his third act of his life in his, in his early 70s. And we became very dear friends. And I said, I'd love to work with you. Um, let's see what we can come up with. And I came up with this idea. And it was actually inspired by uh, the actor, um, John Lithgow. John Lithgow. Oh, I love him. I love yeah. him. He's great. Yeah. He's the best. Yeah, John Lithgow did a one-man show, and I also read his biography, and, it, and there was a section where he talked about visiting his father during uh, uh, the last uh, you know, months of his life, and he yeah. took off from work, and he just froze his life, and I thought that was so noble and so heroic and, 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 and beautiful, and then I thought, what happens if the father and him didn't get along? What would that look like? Yeah. So that's what inspired the story. And uh, so I, I, I went into it with uh, the fact that these two were butting heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful little film, I'm very proud. Oh, and Geraldine Lear is also in it, who is in Manifest. And she is a, a dear friend, colleague as well. And I knew I wanted to work with her. So I said, look, there's a role for his, um, the father's, uh, I guess, caretaker uh, slash personal assistant. He's this big yeah. uh, actor and she plays that. So she's lovely in it. That's good. Now, was that shot on Long Island? Yes, it was shot. Uh, no, that was shot in Westchester. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, and I had the luxury of because I was the co-producer and the co-writer, and the and the lead actor. Uh, I said I'd love to work with my wife and my daughter. So my wife actually came on board as well as a co-producer. Is that the first? Is that the first time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was a co-producer and she also was my script consultant. So whenever we would go okay. through rewrites, she was really there to kind of bounce ideas off of. And then my daughter, she was only 14 at the time, 14 and a half. Uh, she's also in it. She plays my daughter, Emily. So that was, oh. that was pretty cool because that was like the last, uh, the, the last of her, of her innocence, if, if you will. She was so young and yeah. now she looks like a young woman and it's so weird. You know, you capture that. I understand. You know, understand. you know. <laughs> it's, it's nice when you keep it all in the family, you know. Yeah, it really. It's nice when you can do that. It's 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 a bonding experience. Yeah, you know, people came on board that um, I I was friends with, uh, like Jen Plotsky. She's another actor, dear friend of mine. She was a you know main line producer. Uh, Megan Martin, who was a student of mine, who became sort of everything. My GoFundMe campaign manager to. Uh, you know, uh, uh, wardrobe and making sure everybody was on board with what they were bringing. Uh, my makeup lady is my uh, dear friend, Birna Acosta. And, uh, and then this wonderful angel came on board uh, from, uh, I forget the name of the company, but his name is Jonathan. And he came on as a main producer. And it was just one of those miracles, you know, we needed X amount of money and he came through and it was fantastic. So... A meant to be kind of thing when it goes yeah. like that. Yeah, well, right? he loved the story. He was really moved by it because it deals with family always is, is the most important thing at the end of the day, at the end of your life. And sometimes we realize it at the end of our life, you know? Yeah, exactly. exactly. So now you have another uh, movie and you're the director. It's a short, it's called Fresh Air and it has to do with Alzheimer's. Yes. Uh, fresh air, uh, it, it's interesting because I was kind of working on my long commute script and this one came to me and uh, it was another student of mine and he said, would you like to direct it? Of course, it had Godfrey, the same one that plays my dad, plays his grandfather. So they kind of piggyback really well. They're very different. Mm -hmm. uh, they piggyback beautifully together. The, this is about a, a, a grandson and a, and a grandfather who know that he is slowly losing his, his memory. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to um, let him know he'll be okay. And right. it's, it's a beautiful story. And uh, Montana Rock is the writer. And uh, I was so honored to direct it. So, yeah. And it's up for best uh, short. So I'm really I can I can see how they would piggyback very well together. Yeah, because one of them yeah. with the father's son who haven't seen each other, who has to come back and kind of re- reunite if you will and this one is more about watching your 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 grandfather who's really like his father 
who has been raising this young grandson, uh, slowly leaving him uh, mm. by his mind, and uh, yeah, it's a heartbreaker. Yeah, yeah. I, I I can see how that that would be, and yeah. that's a Long Island premiere, actually. That is. So we're very yeah. excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. So moving on to a little comedy, you have General Mess Hospital. Yeah. <laughs> and you're an actor in that. You play a doctor. So you've heard? I just got here. What was I supposed to hear? Mr. Carlson, room 518, passed away. What happened? He had another stroke, and it wasn't a stroke of luck. What happened to Raul O'Brien? Oh, he coded this morning at 5.45. We know why? Probably got the right medicine for the wrong disease. Nah, I bet he got the wrong medicine for the right disease. I love medical errors. Got us our house in the Hamptons. I'm the chairman of the Department of Neurology at General Mess Hospital. Okay, I'm only the acting chairman. We have a rising death toll among patients, not physicians. And nobody knows how to fix it. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but you are fired. Hmm. No small talk? Dr. Van Buren, how come Raul was in the room with two female patients? It could be because he donated money to the hospital. This is the crack team that is paid to cure the sick. Take Dr. Alexander. I wish another hospital took him. Everybody thinks he's funny and gregarious. I don't. Miss Borai? Um, uh, Boris? Borisenko. We need a new simple job. Stop exaggerating. We know how much you love to wallow, hon. Besides, there's nothing else we can do. Oh! oh so, sorry, doctor. How many times have you discussed with him the quality of his work? I don't recall seeing any quality in his work. How many times have you discussed his competence? Wow. How long has it been? <laughs> Hey, you okay? So you're telling me he had two strokes? Yep. Do I look more Jewish or more vegan? There are rumors you don't like the acting before your title. That's not true. Don't deny it. Rumors are often true. But not always. How about we turn the acting to intern? Well, if he does it again, I'm gonna punch his lights out. Why didn't you call, call the attending? Who says I didn't? So you did. Affirmative. And did he come in and examine the patient? Nope. Uncertainty is all around us. Don't worry, hon. Everything is under control. Will my department survive all the unnecessary deaths? I'm afraid symptoms back, Vip. Will Lana survive the medical trials? Is the department better since last time? Don't worry about the department. I'll take care of you. Yeah. Yeah, you know what's really funny? Um, I knew David Gar Garcia, who's the director uh, from a film I did years ago in Philly. It was a horror movie. And uh, I played a priest in that. And I had one day shoot, actually it was a two day shoot. And it was just so much fun. And I got to, um, you know, do some risque work and kind of high stakes because you're dealing with the devil. <laughs> just crazy stuff. But it was uh, a great meeting of the minds and we stayed friends. And then he had contacted me and said, look, you know, I have a project I'm directing and I'd love for you to take a peek. And I, and I just loved it. It has like a scrubs kind of meets the office with a little bit of Grey's Anatomy in there. So it's, it's, it's fun. It was fun. Yeah. Now that one, that one is not a webisode. That's just a short, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a short, but I think he wants to make it either into a series or a feature. Okay. Uh, I just got contacted from the writer, his name is Bose, um, who is actually was a doctor, or still is. Oh. And he, you know, he had all these great stories and, you know, and he has all these little wild, you know, things to bring up. So I don't know, you know, uh, we'll see. You know, he keeps saying he wants to go back and shoot. So I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, and then you have another comedy, my life as a doormat and you're the director on this this is a webisode yeah. yes it's a webisode i um i met ivy tobin again as one of my students and uh we, we got on really well and i directed another thing a year ago with my wife in it which was actually at uh, uh life last year 
It was called um, Meditation. Uh, and it was about these group of women. And she wrote one of the segments. So she's a great writer. And she said, look, I got this comedy based on a book that I had. It's about, you know, women who kind of lean back on their life while everything is happening. And now they really realize they need to take more initiative. So she, in this story, it's a humorous version of it. It's like the Jewish couple who um, she's having a midlife crisis and something happens, which gives her uh, the opportunity to revisit her past and to watch all the mistakes and the, the uh, and, and the lack of decision making. Yeah. So it's fun. It was fun. Uh, I got to do uh, some really cool things uh, with that. And that was shot in the city. Uh I love the title of it, My Life as a Doormat, because yeah. I think a lot of housewives and mothers sometimes, oh, yeah. especially later on, absolutely kind of view themselves like that because that's how they're treated, you know, she disregarded. Has, she has a, 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 like 84,000 followers on, wow. on Instagram. Crazy. I mean, there's wow. an enormous group that really support uh, this whole concept and, you know, unfortunate uh, that women usually are the ones who want to be the caretaker. And, um, so, yeah, I think it's an important little, and, but it's, but it's light and it's kind of like married with children. <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> I played Dr. Hong Guel, but the G I love that, but the G is silent. The yes. G is silent, yes. And I, saw that. <laughs> I want to give, uh, some of the dates out uh, for yeah. all these wonderful movies. Now you've got the blind date and yeah. these are screening virtually because of COVID they're, they're, yeah. you know, we're screening uh, virtually. You've got the blind date, which is going to screen October 1st, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Yeah. The long commute, October 3rd at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. You have the fresh air Same. at uh, October 3rd. At 3, 3 p.m. Yeah. I got two back to back. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And then you have a General Mess Hospital October 6th at 4.30 p.m. That time okay. block. And then you have My Life as a Doormat October 7th at 1.30 p.m. So people can uh, go to longislandfilm.com, find out more about it. You know, and I want to thank uh, Deborah Markowitz again for the hookup with Anthony so that uh, we can have this lovely talk. Thank and, you. And um, I'm so... Uh, interested in all the work that you do i have to tell you i went to your website and all you people out there if you have a chance to go to anthony's website he has an abundance of very different work you know he it's plays like, so I, many I, different I, I, characters and uh so convincing so convincingly that it's entertaining just to watch your your uh, reels on your website thank you Thank you. Yeah, that's anthonyrobertgrasso.com. Uh, it was designed by a dear friend, uh, Yaron, uh, with yummyzest.com. Uh -huh. uh, they are an incredible company, and they took my whole business to another level. Because I'm also a teacher, director. Uh, I have two different, you know, uh, ways of working on that. Yeah. Are, are you bi-coastal with your teaching? Uh, you know, now that we're going more this way, I've been teaching Zoom only for the last six months. I opened up now to Philly, some people in, in Europe and mm -hmm. in Atlanta, and I have one person that just joined in from L.A. So, yeah, I'm moving into the L.A. market. Um, I'm hoping as an actor, uh, my agency is now trying to start putting me into the L.A. market as well. So, yeah, I got yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I would, I would uh, expect that this COVID has affected you as it's affected so many people, you yeah. know, and, uh, how were you faring? You know, uh, being a teacher that really helped me stay uh, kind of on point uh, and yeah. keep fresh because, yeah. you know, I call it my gym. I work out with my guys every day and my gals, but um, as far as acting goes, no, everything seized. Uh, but what I did do, I worked on my website, I worked on my, my reel, I worked on clips, I right. just all the tools ready, you know, that's why I tell my actors. And then the last thing was, I was all set to direct my wife's film that she just wrote called uh, Crumb Cake. It's a oh. beautiful, uh, drama of about three sisters who come to uh, close their home that the mother owned where they grew up, who now just passed. Oh. And it's fantastic. It's such a great script. So we were all set to shoot and COVID hit. 
we bumped it to September and we bumped it again because it's still yeah. where we were six months ago, sadly. So I'm getting ready to do that, I hope. And is that going to be 2021, do you think? I hope so. And if it's ready, I'd love to get it here next year because I love life. Yeah. life has been, it's, honestly, it's one of the best kept secrets in New York of a film festival. It's, uh, you know, they really have a great array of talent and, and beautiful filmmakers. Last year, I had the luxury of meeting about six directors. We were on a panel and uh, I, I got to be friendly with them and they're all so talented. So it's, yeah. it's great. Yeah. Well, it was it was voted one of the best, uh, one of the coolest yeah. film festivals in the United States, the Long Island International Film Expo, Life. Yeah. And uh, I have a couple of questions for you, if sure. you don't mind me sure. asking. Not at all. Okay. If you walked into a Home Depot, where would you head? Lumber, garden, power tools, paint, or seasonal? I would say paint. Paint? Yeah. Is that something that you do? Well, you know, I started out as a visual artist. That's how I became an actor. And uh, so my you wife went to the school. You went to the school of visual arts, right? Correct. Yeah, I was going to be um, an art director, and I minored in illustration, fine art, and then acting. And then everything kind of led me to acting, which actually worked out really well because I have a very graphic eye, which helps in directing and. So that's right. good, but, uh, so, but the paints, I love, like my wife and I are always doing little home projects and we're always repainting. <laughs> so, yeah, paint would be the one. Okay, you're at an amusement park. Mm -hmm. You avoid the roller coaster, house of mirrors, the carousel, or the food concession. Um, you know, God, I love them all, uh, except roller coasters. <laughs> I probably don't go on anymore as much. Um, I don't know why. As I got older, I just thought, ah, I don't need all that. <laughs> it's too much stress. Is, is, it, is it because you realize there could be some, some more danger involved there than you had thought previously? Yeah, but I would say, you know, you know what? I take that back because I probably would still go on. Um, the concession stand, I would stay away from. Uh, <laughs> uh, being, being an Italian-American uh, and part Watching two, the waistline, watching I, the yeah, waistline. I, you know, it's, it's tough after a certain age, you know, so we... Yeah, it's like stay away from the hot dogs, you know. <laughs> okay, your favorite article of clothing to buy would be shoes, sneakers, suit and tie, or sportswear? Uh, you know, I was going to say like leatherwear, like leather jackets. I love that, you know. You like the cool look. I like, I like, I like yeah, look. I like my, uh, I like a good leather jacket. Um, I like sport. I don't dress normally. I'm usually, my whole days are usually in sneakers and jeans. Yeah. Which is great. You know, I always feel younger because of it. Uh, That's but, kind of the way of the world, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, now with COVID, you know, I mean, I'm teaching in shorts. <laughs> That's, crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. I have another one. Sure. What is the room you spend the most time in? The bathroom, the living room, the den, the bedroom? Or the basement, um, or, your, or your studio. Yeah, I would probably say my office. Your you office. Know? Yeah, my office, because uh, I do most of my work through here. This is my office where I'm now, and uh, I usually probably put a good five hours in here a day. TV too, den and bedroom. I sleep mostly, um, but we don't keep a TV in our room. No, no. you don't need a TV to sleep. No, I try not to because for me, it stimulates me. Oh, um, yeah, well, everybody's my, different. Yeah, it puts my wife to sleep, but that'd be, it, it'll, it'll, it'll get me engaged and then I can't shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What would be your favorite song category? Rock, country, oldies, or R&B? R&B. R&B? R&B, yeah. Do you have a favorite song? Um, I like anything from the whole Motown era, uh, you know, any, any Aretha Franklin or uh, Otis James. I mean, any of these guys I love, you know. Uh, the Jackson Five when I was a kid, that was like my thing. Uh, but I like Marvin Gaye probably the most. He was, he was just the coolest cat, you know. So, now, yeah. were, were you inspired by any TV shows when you were a kid? Do you have any favorites that you kind of still watch to this day? 
Uh, you know, when I was younger, I, I always loved cop shows, I guess. So Beretta was one of them that I remember vividly. And I, I wanted his bird. I wanted to be Beretta. <laughs> I wanted to drive Starsky and Hutch's car. You know, I mean, so yeah. So I've been interested in, uh, there's a TV LA uh, detective story called Bosch. And it's awesome. And that show I would kill to be on, you know, just because it's all about detectives and, and you know, a lot of conflict between the families. It's good stuff. That, so, was yeah, on, I mean, that was on earlier, right? That's not on now, is it? It's off now, but I think they're coming back for a last season, but there's seven seasons already. So yeah, it's been on since 2013. Oh. But it's a good show. I mean, if you haven't seen it, it's a good show. But okay. yeah, I think that got inspired also by, oddly enough, and I know it sounds cliche, but you know, when I was a kid, my family loved to watch TV together. And we watched, uh, I remember The Godfather. So, uh, you know, uh, like it was yesterday and I fell in love with the whole, the whole film, you know, the, the, the family dynamic. I'm one of four. I'm the baby of four. Um, so I really related to Michael Corleone. Uh, I was always the quiet one and everybody, you know, my brother was the big one who was like sunny and my other brother was like the oldest who was just a, a ladies man. And then I have a sister. So uh, they used to call me little, little Corleone. <laughs> but I, yeah. I, I realized, yeah. And I, and I kind of realized that Michael, uh, you know, was played by Al Pacino. When I was a kid, I didn't really know who that was, but I, I related to him because he was this Italian guy. He kind of resembled, you know, big eyes and, you know, Italian features. And so I, uh, so as I got older and became an actor, uh, my, my agents always say he's a cross between Al Pacino and Dustin Hoffman because I got the light eyes. So, I can see uh, that. I can yeah. see that. And, and the talent is definitely there. So anyway, we're out of time. Oh, that was great. I appreciate it. And uh, I really wish you all the luck in the festival. I hope that you win some prizes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be watching for The Blind Date, The Long Commute, Fresh Air, General Mess Hospital, and My Life as a Doormat. And <laughs> I hope we see you again next year because uh. you're always so busy.